Hello Lolas, welcome back to my channel guys. If you are new and have not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. And don't forget most importantly to give this video a thumbs up. I love to see the thumbs up. And also leave me a comment in the comment section. There's a couple things that you can do to support this channel. Number one, you're already doing it if you're watching this video. That's most important that you are watching my videos. Thank you. Also, guys, if you like the video, that's a way of showing support, sharing the video. That's another way. And then there's other ways. If you want to go a step further, you can join my paid channel membership, which I call the Chatterbox. And the link is in the description bar if you don't have a join button. It is $1.99 to join. You do have to be at least 18. And trust me, you want to be grown <laughs> to be in the chatterbox. Um, we do, you know, a live stream once a month, which I think I am almost due for another one now. And um, so I'll be doing that soon. Also, guys, I have merch. You can see that below. And all of these things definitely support the channel. And whenever you see me do like a giveaway or whatever, that helps a lot of that as well. Um, but mostly a lot of people have been following my channel for quite a while. I've been doing YouTube for about eight years. Um, originally when it started out, um, I didn't know anything about monetizing my channel or anything like that. So I did it just because I loved it. And as my channel got, you know, bigger, um, then I discovered that I could monetize. And just a long story short of how that worked out for me, <laughs> it used to take me about six months before I would get $100. So, but then of course it did progress and things were fine, but then um, Google bought YouTube and then things changed again. So um, it's not that YouTubers are trying to get rich off of you guys or anything like that. It's just to support the channel um, and the, um, the content creator. But anyway, that's just a little background there. So some of you guys that may be new um, may or may not understand that. But moving forward, the baby you are looking at is baby Winter. And Winter is the, um, oh my gosh, what is your scope? Louisa Sculpt by Lillian Breville. Sculpt, sculpted by Lillian Breville. Poured and molded by Claire Teller Dolls. Um, she is in the soft silicone and she... Uh, is poured in one piece anyway you guys will see all that I'm gonna get her dressed um but in the meantime while I get her dressed I do want to talk about a couple uh things um let's see how will I get her change how will I get you change mama now I may block the camera a little here and there but that's okay I will move out the way so that you guys can see her um A little later just keep in mind she is a work in progress so she is not you know fully I mean she is she's had at least one you know mat um, session um, she is due for another one um, once I get time but she is my personal baby so I figured just get her good enough to where I can play with her for a little bit and then when I get done with my custom orders and stuff I can you know finish up everything with her I'm not going to try to perfect her for the the camera. Um, but anyway, um, so one of the topics that's always trending within the community is, sorry, something that, uh, whatever. Um, something that, that is forever trending in the community is um, first time, First right of refusal. That is a subject that, you know, I see collectors visit all the time, um, artists and stuff. And because I think this pretty much came about because so many people are no longer doing um, customs. So um, people want to be able to secure babies from their favorite artists and or, you know, certain babies that other collectors have gotten from their favorite artists. And they want to have a, a, a piece of security that they'll be next in line to get the baby. So how it normally works is someone might reach out to you and say, hey, I know you got, you know, winter. Um, 
and I know you said she's your personal baby, but if you ever decide to sell her, will you contact me first? Or some people just say, will you let me know? But some people will say, you know, will you contact me first? I would love to be able to buy her. Um, some people say, oh, I, I want to have first right of refusal. And um, so basically they expect you to contact them, wait till you tell them that um you are they are not interested before you offer it to somebody else now sometimes that goes perfect sometimes you reach out to the person you say hey i have this baby i think 80 percent of the time they say oh i'm sorry i just bought another baby um yeah i, I would have loved to brought her home but i can't da 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 da, -da. and then you could just easily move on um but there are times where the person may um say they and then that's that's great because they responded right away you can move on about your business and the other thing that you know where it works out um and this this happens like you know well this happens and it'd be a good way when they say oh um, yes, I want to get the baby, um, you know, send me an invoice or I'll send you PayPal, whatever, whatever. But then there's the times where you write this person that was wanting the baby and either they tell you, either they don't respond right away, they don't, you know, read your message or they read it and don't say anything for days or they just, um... They, they tell you to hold on and give them a little bit. They're working on something. They need a couple weeks or, you know, or something like that. And that kind of drags the process out. And that's kind of part of where the problem goes. You know, you're ready to move this baby out of your collection right away. You need the money to bring home another one of your special babies. But now you're held up waiting for a response from this person because you promised them you would give them first right of refusal. That is where the problem, one of the problems come in. Another thing, another scenario comes in when you, um, um, <laughs> so yeah, so then you're wait, left waiting forever. So how long are you supposed to wait before you move on? Then the other problem is when If you forget, <laughs> God forbid, if you forget, like, um, I know some people say they keep a list. I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't keep a list with nothing. And even if I do, a lot of times in my erratic behavior, I will throw out papers where it just have little stuff written down. I don't really, I'm not that organized with my thoughts that I've just said, oh, I'm going to write this down. Um, I don't do that. And what if you forget? Um then you know what you you you're in trouble then too so the first right of refusal just don't seem to be the best idea um not only that if you got a first you do a first right of refusal and you already had somebody else that's interested they're ready to pay right then and there but the person you gave first right of refusal needs six months to pay the baby off what you gonna do you know what I mean? It's just so many things that could go wrong with that whole first right of refusal thing. So that's why I don't like to do it. Um, and, you know, at this point, you know, I feel like in this in this hobby, in this community, people find so many things to try to trash people or ruin. They're going to ruin their reputation because you chose to sell your doll to someone different. Why? Why should that ruin your reputation why should that make you untrustworthy because you sold your doll to somebody else they make it seem sometimes people make it seem like you done turned into a whole scammer because you decide to do something you wanted to do with your doll like they hadn't paid you no money or anything so how is that making you untrustworthy yeah i get it you didn't keep your word because xyz but sometimes there's a lot of different things come into play with that um there has been times where people 
will try to lowball me on price and when somebody else come along and I know they might really really want the baby but if they they've been lowballing me on the price and somebody else come and offer me full price of what I was asking I'm not sitting there to play with you I mean for real who who got the time I'm I'm just being honest so I don't know you know, I, I think it works out sometimes. And sometimes you do have that, you know, certain customer that you know pretty much usually, you know, keep their word and stuff. And you might still say, hey, I'll let you know. Yeah, I'll let you know or whatever. But I, you know, sometimes with, you know, people I'll say, hey, I'll tell you when I'm putting it up for sale. And then I'm going to put it up, you know, I'm going to put it up for sale. The other part is... Let's say you're doing a baby and um, it's not a custom per se or a private order, but you, you told, this person told you they wanted this particular sculpt and wanted you to paint it. So you paint it with them in mind and then you paint it and then the buyer don't really like how it turned out. I feel also it puts the buyer in a spot too because now that buyer with all this when you go to start talking about um, ruining people reputation and all that and stuff I think that that puts the buyer in a tough spot too um, because sometimes people will go ahead and buy the baby even though they don't really like it because they feel like they said they would and they don't want to be labeled as a time waster or you know, not keeping their word or, you know, oh, you. she said she was going to do it, but, you know, when I got to her, she didn't do it. So now I'm never going to do that with her again. They feel obligated sometimes to go through with it, even though they don't really even like it. They didn't like the way it came out. So I think sometimes if we just be patient and wait, look, hello, should I leave her ears out? I think if we just be patient and wait till we see the baby, you know, it might work out better for you than be saying, I definitely want it no matter what, because no matter what may, may make you um, eat your words because you might see it and be like, why she did that? She ain't never done that before. And now she did that. I don't like it. But then, so what? If they don't buy it now, I have the right to go smearing their name in the background and telling people, you know, she ain't, she ain't no good customer because she lied. She said she was going to buy my baby, but she didn't. Oh, my gosh. Da, 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 da. I mean, I th like I said, I think the community has this way of trying to tell everybody what to do, control people. And they spend more time trying to ruin someone and tear somebody down than to, to making the community a, a happy place or you know, at least an enjoyable place where, you know, people just move on. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my take on that. And I just thought I would have that conversation with you guys and, you know, just to give another different perspective out there. I get what some people are saying. And then there's another thing. Sometimes also when you say, you know, you change your mind about selling a baby or something like that. Sometimes that happens, but as long as I haven't accepted any money from you or, you know, told you I was about to invoice you, me saying that I, I'm going to sell the baby is like nothing because I changed my mind so much. Um, but then... <laughs> But then you, you turn around and you be like, I can't do it. <laughs> then, you know, you have that right. But I definitely feel that it's wrong if you, you know, um, sell the baby, take money, and then say, I want, I, I, I got to cancel it. I, I think that would be a bit much. Um, I got these little pacifiers and they work really good, guys, if you are looking for a pacifier with a small nip nipple um so i don't know how she's gonna look with this because she doesn't tend to look that well with pacifiers 
I don't know why, but the way her mouth is, see her pacifier kind of leans downward, no matter how you put it in her mouth. It's very few pacifiers that actually fit nicely. And it goes in with no problem. Like you can see, it's in her mouth completely. But it's just that it tend to lean down for it. And I don't really like it. I don't like the way she looks with the pacifiers in. So she's really not a pacifier baby. Which is good for me because I don't, I like them for, uh, you know, accessories. But I don't, um. Oh, hang on, let me wipe this stuff off of it. I, I like them for, you know, just to be there, but I don't really necessarily have to have them. I just like them to be, like, in the photo sometime. Just, you know, as a prop. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. That's that's the topic for today. Um, Of course, I'm still going to make that video letting you guys know about pre-orders. Uh, for the Abby and the Aspen by Claire Taylor. It starts May 12th, which is this week, guys. So uh, stay tuned for another video on that.